This Hour in Hollywood is presented by the makers of Lux Flakes, those sheer fine flakes that keep fabrics and colors smart, new-looking, and fresh so much longer. That's why they're used in all the leading studios, including Paramount, whose world-famous director now takes his place by the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The island of Manhattan was bought from the Indians for merchandise valued at $18.21. Critics say that the 21 cents was for Brooklyn. If that's true, small change made great changes in motion pictures because one Brooklyn neighborhood gave the screen Norma and Constance Talmadge, Lillian and Dorothy Gish, Anita Stewart, Irving Thalberg, and the star of tonight's production. Marion Davies. Known throughout the world for her generous support of deserving enterprises, Miss Davies' most famous charity is the Children's Clinic, built and maintained by her at Hotel, California. Throughout her career as artist model, chorus girl, Shakespearean actress, and picture star, she has preserved a refreshing wit. She's unexcelled as comedian and mimic. Her father was Judge Bernard J. Duras, a New York magistrate. And as a little girl, she often watched the drab parade of transgression and poverty that passed before his bench. In the role of the brat, she plays a character that she's known since childhood. The courtroom in which our play opens might well have been the very room in which she and her father sat so many times. Co-starring with Miss Davies in tonight's drama is Joel McRae as Steve Forrester, the black sheep of a wealthy New York family. Both Miss Davies and I claim to have discovered Joel, but I'll take that argument up with her a little later. And now, the curtain rises in the Lux Radio Theater. The play is The Brat, and here are Miss Marion Davies and Mr. Joel McRae. Dimly lighted side street in New York's West 50s, Manhattan's famous night court is in session. A restless crowd stares and murmurs. Along the wall is ranged a line of shabby miscreants. They shuffle uneasily in their places, waiting their turn before the bench. Next case. Daniel A. Fogarty. Here. Stand over there. What's the charge? Disturbing the peace, engaging in a fist fight, and resisting arrest. Guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, I was only... Guilty to... or not guilty? Uh, guilty, Your Honor, but there wasn't any fight, Your no Honor. No fight? Uh, no, Your Honor. You see, the man was no match for me at all, at all. He was... That's little... enough. Ten days. Ten days? Why, Your Honor, Come no... Come on. Glory be, and what did I tell the old woman this time now? Stop it! Stop it, let me go. I ain't done nothing. I ain't done anything. Uh, come on, you've got no right to. Quiet, Miss Nolan. None of your lips. What's the matter there, officer? Order. Quiet. You, you ain't got no right to do this. Quiet. What's the matter, officer? This girl, Your Honor, she wouldn't come with me peaceful. I had to drag her for six blocks. But I ain't done nothing, Judge. Honest, I ain't. Just a moment. What's the charge, officer? Vagrancy, Your Honor. Vagrancy. Well, young lady, anything to say? No, sir. Why not? Because I don't know what it means. <laughs> Quiet. What's your name? Peggy McLaren. And where do you live, Peggy? I don't live anywhere now. You have no home? No, sir. You see, I just come out of the hospital a couple of days ago. I was sick. I went back to the dance hall on Delancey Street where I used to work. Only they wouldn't give me my jaw back again because they said I got too skinny and I didn't have no money or nothing, so, so I didn't have no place to go. I see. Well, that's what we mean by vagrancy. People who have no jobs and no homes are called vagrants. So you arrest him. That's fine, that is. How can a guy get a job or a home when you got him locked up in the jug? Order! <laughs> you don't seem to understand, Peggy. We don't arrest vagrants as criminals. We do it for their own good, to take them off the streets. That cop of yours took me off the street, all right. He almost broke me arm. Well, you should have come with him peacefully. Now tell me, before you went to the hospital, where did you live then? Delancey and Cooper Street. I lived there with an old lady. 
She said she was my aunt. She said she was your aunt. Yeah, I didn't know her so well personally. <laughs> Why didn't you go back to her? Well, I wanted to. But when she found out I didn't have no job and couldn't bring her no wages, she said she wasn't my aunt no more. You have no one else you could go to? No parents? No, sir. I ain't had any parents since... <laughs> Since I can remember. Well, I'm afraid there's only one thing we can do. You ain't going to send me up. Not to jail. Oh, no, no, of course not. But for your own protection, I think we'll have to put you somewhere where you can get the proper care and nourishment until you get on your feet again. You mean... You mean a home? Yes, a home for girls. Oh, no, Judge, please. Don't send me to one of those places. Please don't send me... No, no, it's not so bad as that. But I don't want to go. I'll get a job again. Give me a chance, please. Oh, please, give me a chance. Uh, now, now, there's no use crying here. <laughs> Look up here. Your yes? Oh, good evening, Macmillan. May I speak to you a moment? I'm sorry, but... It's about this case. Oh. I'd like to speak to you alone. Of course. Now, you go over there and sit down, young lady. And please try to stop crying. <laughs> Come into my chambers, will you, Macmillan? Well, Mac, what are you doing down this way? Looking for a little local color. For your new book, I suppose. That's right, and I think I've got it. That girl, Judge Henry. <laughs> what about her? She's just the type I've been looking for. I'd like a chance to know her better, to study her. You see, the book's called The Breath, and she fits it to perfection. There's not much doubt about that. But how are you going to get a chance to study her? I mean, uh... Well, here's the way I see it. If I could take her home with me for a few months... Take her home? I don't think your mother would appreciate that. Oh, she won't mind, and it's a great opportunity for the girl. Between mother and me, we ought to be able to make something out of her. Well, I don't know, Mac. I can't give her over into your charge. But if Mrs. Forrester is willing to do it... I'll give her a ring right now. Well, there's the phone. Thank you. Hello? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, she's right here. Who is it, gentlemen? Mr. Macmillan, ma'am. Hello? Yes, Macmillan. Where? Well, what are you doing there? Oh. Bring her here? But what for? Well, well, of course, if you want to, Macmillan, but I really don't see... Well, well, very well, dear. Yes, yes, I will. Goodbye, dear. Simpson. Yes, Mrs. Potterson? My son is bringing a young lady home with him. Have some sandwiches and coffee ready, please. Very good, ma'am. Is that you, Mac? No, Mother. Oh, Stephen. Hello, Mother. How are you feeling? Very badly, thanks to you. Why? What's the matter? You know very well what's the matter. Where have you been all evening? At the club. I thought. You've been drinking again, haven't you? Well, I had one, if that's what you mean. Well, that's one too many for you, Stephen. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mother, you treat me as if I were a child. That's the only way you deserve to be treated. Why weren't you home for dinner? I didn't know you expected me. But you might have called. I'm sorry, Mother, I didn't know you'd worry. Not worry. With you out until all hours, carousing around with those good-for-nothing friends of yours? Why shouldn't I worry? Well, my friends are all right. Yes, you think they are, because they're just like you. A lot of young wastrels. Wastrels? Is that your opinion of me? If you want the truth, Stephen, yes. You have the spark of ambition in your whole makeup. If you had, you'd have stayed in college. Instead, you failed miserably. Well, that wasn't entirely my fault. I didn't want to study art. You know that. You and Mac made me. I wanted to go to a regular school and be a real man. Your brother Mac is an artist, an author. Do you mean to insinuate that he's not a real man? Oh, you know what I mean. I wanted to study engineering and build roads and bridges. Yes, and because we didn't allow you, you insist on drinking yourself to death. Oh, but, Mother, it isn't as bad as that. I take a little sometimes. I probably wouldn't take anything if you'd let me alone. Oh. You and Mac nag at me from morning to night. All I get is criticism, suspicion, discouragement. Everything I do seems to be wrong. Mother, why don't you let me go out west? I could work on the ranch. I know I could. What ranch are you speaking of? Dad's old place in Wyoming. Oh. I'd be a lot happier out well, there. Well, I don't mind your going, but I'll have to see your brother first. He'll decide what's best for you. Excuse me, Mrs. Forrester. Yes, Simpson, what is it? Will you be needing me anymore tonight, ma'am? No, I don't think so. Just lock the windows, please. Very good, ma'am. I'm going upstairs now, Stephen. We'll talk about the trip west in the morning. Good night. Good night, Mother. Oh, Simpson. Yes, Mr. Steve. Uh, is my brother in yet? No, Mr. McMillan is at the night court, sir. 
At the night court? <laughs> he hasn't been arrested, has he? Oh, not at all. He's looking for a female character to write into his new book. Ah, The Brat by Mr. Macmillan Forrester. The life story of a child of the slum. That's it, sir. That's it. Uh, uh, Timpson. Timpson, come here. Is there, uh... Any liquid refreshment about? Liquid refreshment? Hmm. But, Mr. Steve, I thought you weren't going to drink any more. I was merely crippled with good intentions. At your age, sir. Age is a mental condition, Timson. A moment ago, I was a pure old man. Just now, I'm a bad boy about to play hooky from school. Ah, you're a bit of a tall talker like your father, Mr. Steve. He could say 40 words and there wouldn't be a bit of sense in 39 of them. I'm like my father, eh? I don't remember him very well. What kind of a man was he, Tim? A fine, upstanding, dependable man. And that's what he was. Oh, I'm no relative to him, then. Fat, you're his twin, only a few years younger. No, Timson, you're all wrong. You know what I am? I'm a wastrel, Timson. I haven't a spark of ambition. I was even fired out of college. Yes, sir. I should have heard your mother speak of it, sir. Yes, I'll bet you have. Now, what about that little nip? Are you sure it's all right, sir? No, Mrs. Forrester said... Never that... mind that now, Timson. Give me the keys to the closet. Oh, I can't do that, sir. But listen... I'll go upstairs with you and see if I can't find something. Ah, now you're talking, Timson. Come on. Hey, mister. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Not at all. Where are we going? You'll see. The judge said you were going to take care of me. Is that right? Right. Well, what's the layout? The layout? Yeah, the payoff. What's it all about? Oh, I'll explain it to you later. This is the house. Come on. Are you sure it's all right? Of course. I mean, nobody's going to get sore or nothing. <laughs> I don't think so. There we are. Go ahead. Thanks. Say, is this where you're bored? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. Gee, it's a swell dump, all right. Not so bad. Real fireplace and everything. Brr. Me mitts his hair froze. Sit down. I think you'll find this chair pretty comfortable. No, I guess I'd get it dirty. I've been walking around in the mud all day. All day? Yeah, it's been a long day, too. I didn't know I was so tired till I sat down in your automobile. Well, why didn't you take a little nap on the way up? I can't sleep if I'm scared. Scared? You're not scared now, are you? Uh-huh. Well, nothing's going to hurt you here. Well, how hungry are you? Well, I had a cup of coffee for breakfast. Nothing since? No. Nope. Well, I'll see if I can't hustle up a sandwich for you. Make mine a hamburger. I don't believe there's a bit of hamburger in the house. Wouldn't chicken do? Chicken? Ah, you're kidding me. No, I'm not. If everybody hasn't gone to bed, we'll have a bite of supper together. Wait. I wouldn't ring that bell if I was you. Why not? Well, if you get your landlady up, she'll be awful sore on you. <laughs> Don't worry. She's used to me by this time. Sit down. Well, I guess I can take a chance. Hey, Pipe, what's coming down the stairs? Is that your father? Hardly. His name is Timpson. Well, you do the swear, and I won't say a word. You rang, sir? Yes, Timpson, I want you to get a few sandwiches and a pot of hot coffee and make the sandwiches thick. The sandwiches are already made, sir. Good, rush them along, will you, Timpson? Very good, sir. He's a mean-looking old guy, ain't he? I never seen a landlady's husband yet that wasn't a grouch. Wouldn't you like to take off your coat? Yeah, I guess so. You didn't seem to like the night court. I was never there before. I guess you laughed the way I was, you know, carrying on so. No, why should I? Because I was so green. Where were you when they picked you up? Sitting on a bench... I was scared stiff the way that cop spoke to me. Why didn't you come with him when he asked you to? I don't know. Say, you're awful nosy, ain't you? <laughs> That's my business. I'm a writer. I like to find things out. Then you put them in the newspaper? No, I put them in a book, and then I sell the book. Oh. Don't you get awful tired walking from house to house? <laughs> Say, what if you had shoes like mine? They was gifted to me in the hospital. When I get rich someday, I'm going to have two pairs of shoes, so I won't know which ones to put on. <laughs> when you get rich... Well, I can't make you rich, but I might be able to help you a little. How do you mean? Well, right now, you have no home, no relatives, no friends. Nothing. If you left here now, you'd have no place at all to go, would you? No. Nope. Well, you don't have to leave. I'd like you to stay. Here, in this place? Yes, I need someone to work with me, sort of a secretary. And I'm sure my mother could find something for you to do. In return, we can offer you a good home, good clothes, and good food. Then it'd be like, like I was working here? You'd given me a regular job? Yes. Oh, gee, Oh, gosh, mister, that's... That's just well of you. Yeah, yeah, please, please. You mustn't do that. Take my handkerchief. Handkerchief? It looks like a towel. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, no more tears. No. Nary one. The sandwiches, Mr. McMillan? Oh, yes, put them down over here, Timpson. All right, sir. There we are. Now, young lady? Oh, look, a whole flock of them. Which one can I have? Any one you like. Thanks. 
What? Gee, look at the letter. Gee, you're rich, ain't you? Do you want your coffee now? I can't swallow only one thing at a time. Do you want cream, sugar, or both? Don't ask me nothing for a while. Me ears is busy. Listen to me teeth chew. <laughs> your coffee, miss? Papa, go. I beg your pardon. Papa, go. Timson, she means put it down. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Say, he don't understand much English, does he? Not much. I beg your pardon, sir. Timson, will you run upstairs and see if my mother's still awake? If she is, ask her to come down here, please. Very good, sir. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello, Angela. Yes, I just got in. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Angela. I forgot all about it. I went downtown to the night court and I... Oh, please don't be angry, Angela. Listen, meet me tomorrow for lunch, and I'll tell you all about it. Yes, at the Ritz, will you? All right. Good night, Angela. Angela, is that a dame? It's a girl, if that's what you mean. Oh, a real high-class dame, huh? Uh-huh. What's the matter, getting a little sleepy? Yeah, I wish I could die right now. Well, why wish that? Because my stomach is so happy. Well, there are some more sandwiches left. You'll have to finish them. Gee, I don't think... I don't think I can hold them. Can I save this big one till tomorrow? Certainly, if you wish. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's nice and warm in here. Mm. Tell me, why didn't you apply to some some benevolent association? There are plenty scattered over the city. At least I've always heard there were. Why didn't you go to one of them? I said, why didn't you... Are you asleep? <laughs> All tuckered out. McMillan. Shh. Come here, Mother. You want me, dear? I thought you were going to bring some girl home. There she is. She's asleep. Well, for heaven's sake. She's just what I've been looking for, Mother. What? A little savage living by her wits. If I can keep her here for a while, I'll have a perfect living model of the brat. <laughs> well, it certainly is trying to live with a genius. But if you want her to stay, well, stay she shall. I'll call Margot. Thanks. You can give her some kind of an outfit for tonight, and I'll see that she has some decent clothes tomorrow. <laughs> What's that? Let me alone. Let me alone, Simpson. Wait, it's, it's Stephen. Has he been drinking again? Oh, I don't know, Mac. He was all right before. Mr. Steve, go upstairs and know again like a good man. No, no, no. I want a little drink. Steve. Well, if it ain't Mac. Hello, Mac, old boy. How are you? Oh, Steve. I'll handle this, Steve. Mother. Steve, come down here. Sure, sure. Come on, Timson. Mac wants to... Oh! Holy mackerel, the joint spins. What's going on here? Be quiet, please. Ah, oh, there you are, there. You're all right. No, Mr. Steve, you're all right. What happened? You fell down the stairs. That's what happened. Stand up. You've no right in a decent house with decent people. You belong in some cheap tenement, a corner bar room, you dirty little tramp. Grab, huh? Give me a lift, Timson. Yes, sir. Timson, you leave him alone. Steve, you've been carried up those stairs for the last time. Either you get up alone or you stay where you are for the rest of the night. All right. I'll get up alone. Why don't you let the old guy help him? He can't get up alone. You keep out of this, please. What are you picking on him for, all of you? Who is he anyway? He's my son. Well, get a move on your den and put him to bed. What the deuce is the matter with you fellas? Come on, buddy. I'll give you a hand myself. <laughs> a minute, we will go on with Act Two of The Brat, starring Marion Davies and Joel McRae. Right now, I notice a very attractive young woman standing beside our announcer, Mr. Roick. I know he wants to introduce her to our radio audience. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest here tonight is not in the movies, but she probably knows movie stars as intimately as anyone in Hollywood. In fact, she sees them with their hair down. Am I right, Miss Pedretti? Yes, that's literally true, Mr. Ruick. Of course it is. Because Miss Rosa Pedretti is one of the experts in Hollywood's most famous beauty salon, West Boys. With customers like Irene Dunn. Yes, and Carol Lombard, Ruth Chatterton, Kay Francis, Betty Davis. I could name ever so many. Uh, your special work is taking care of the star's hands, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps the women listening in will think that is easy. A screen star has no housework. No scrubbing, no dishwashing to make her hands rough and red. But here's an interesting fact. I see other hands besides those of movie stars. I've seen many, many hands that go in the dishpan three times a day and yet look as soft and smooth and attractive as screen stars' hands. And it should interest you, Mr. Ruick, that so many of those women give the credit to using Lux Flakes in the dishpan regularly. We like to hear that, Miss Pedretti. Lux Flakes deserve compliments. They're marvelous. So gentle and soothing. I know that myself because we use them in the manicure bowls at Westmore's. 
we find that Lux Flakes are not drying. They don't rob the skin of its natural oils. You must have some interesting experiences in connection with your work for the stars. Yes. For instance, the other day Ruth Chatterton thought she'd like to ride down Sunset Boulevard on a motorcycle. She did, with William Wyler, her director in Dodsworth. Next morning, she was dressing for a scene in the picture and discovered that she had broken a nail. A calamity in a close-up. But Westmore fixed it up. Now, you're not going to tell me that you grow nails. Of course not. But we make them. Perfect ones of fireproof uh, celluloid. Not very practical for everyday use, but fine in an emergency. Thank you, Miss Pedretti. And now, to every woman who wants smooth, lovely hands, please remember this. Be sure to use Lux Flakes for washing dishes, so you'll protect and beautify your hands. And once again, Mr. DeMille. We resume the story of The Brat, starring Marion Davies. For three months, the brat has enjoyed the comforts of the Forrester home, living a life of luxury while supplying Macmillan with material for his new book. We find her sitting importantly in Macmillan's private study. As the telephone rings, she lifts the receiver and speaks in her best society manner. Hello? Hello? Who is it? Who is it speaking, please? Who is it? Say, listen, Lizzie. Mr. Forrester's a hard-working fella, and he ain't got no time to get with a skirt that won't give a moniker. Get me? That settles that. Well, if it isn't my old friend, the brat. How are you, young lady? I beg your pardon, please. To whom would you speak in? I'm Mr. McMillan Forrester's private secretary. Oh, well, I'm Mr. McMillan's brother, Steve. You remember me, don't you? Oh, yeah. You're that funny-looking guy what lives here in this house. <laughs> right. Was you looking for somebody? Yes, I uh, was looking for you. I ain't here. Come back next Tuesday. <laughs> ah, Steve, don't it beat the devil what good times me and you has? Certainly does beat the Dutch. Oh, that means you don't like for me to say devil. Does it? Maybe. All right, have it your way. I'll stand for it from you, but nobody else. Not nobody. <laughs> say, did you know that Mac was all through? Through with the book? Yeah, we're done, ain't it, swell? Yes. Uh, well, when are you going away? Huh? Well, when are you leaving us? I ain't. You mean they're going to let you stay? Did Mac say so? What are you talking about, Steve? This is where I live. If it hadn't been for Mac, I would maybe be living in somebody's jail. But he wouldn't stand for it. He'd rather I lived where he lived. Yes, I know that. But you said the book was done, finished. Now what? I don't know. You going to that charity ball tonight? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Why not? Won't your mom let you? <laughs> oh, I guess she would. You ain't been drinking again and got her sore. Not a drop for three months. Oh, I'm awful glad, Steve. Thanks to you, little sister. Me? I didn't have nothing to do with it. Oh, yes, you did. Ah, you just say that because you like me. Because I... I like you. Gee, you say that as if you mean it. Do I? Peggy, you've never been out west, have you? I've been as far as Jersey City. No, no, I mean way out west. Where men and men? Nah. How would you like to live out there? Why, is Mac going to move? No, he isn't. I am. Oh, you are? No, it's a wonderful place. Miles and miles of open country where you can ride all day long and never hear a sound. Just the singing of the wind in your ears. Yeah, and the moon of the cows. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't care to go out there, I guess. Who, me? Nah, it's too lonesome. Besides, I can get all that kind of stuff I want watching a Western movie. Oh, yes, I, I suppose you can. Hello. Oh, hello, Mac. What are you doing here, Steve? Well, I, I wanted to speak to you about something. Anything important? No, not, not very. Well, I'm going to be rather busy just now. Oh, all right. Well, I'll be back later then. I'll be here. Is anything wrong, Mr. Mack? What? No, no, of course not. You look kind of funny. I thought maybe you was mad or something. No, no, not mad, just tired. Hand me that manuscript, will you? Ah, oh, no, please. Don't read any more today. You make yourself sick working so hard. You certainly take good care of me, don't you? Why not? You took pretty good care of me once. You know, Brett, you've grown amazingly the last couple of months. Yeah, I guess it's because I've been eating regular. Oh, boy, is that a pleasure. Does food mean so much to you? Nah, I don't care. Only when I got to go without it for a long time, I kind of miss it. Did you see the flower I put on your desk? 
Well, thank you. Ah, that's all right. I swiped it. Well, it's very wrong for little girls to swipe things. I suppose you knew that. Well, flowers ain't stealing. They belong to everybody. <laughs> you know, I have a half mind to write a sequel to you. What's a, a, a sequel? It's another book. Oh, is me and Richard going to be in it like we was before? Aye, aye, not me. Is I and Richard going to be in it like we was, huh? Perhaps. He could come back after ten years or so. No, he could, eh? And what would I do? I don't know. Maybe you'd take him back. No, no. No? I, I don't believe you like Richard. Oh, I like him all right, but he never asked me to marry him. That made me kind of sore. Suppose he had asked you. I would have said, oh, ever since the hours I spent with you, dear heart, the sands of the desert grow more colder, so therefore I will be your bride and the world is mine. Nonsense. You know you don't talk like that. Of course I don't, but it's all right in the book. Go on, tell me about the uh, 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 sequel, yeah. All right. Now, the ten years that Richard's been away, you've never seen him. But you've loved him all that time. Uh-huh. So when he returns again, he admits that he's been wrong. He takes you in his arms, like this, and, and he says, I know I'm to blame, dear. I was a young fool. I didn't understand love. I didn't realize the power of it, the beauty and gladness of it. And now I've found you again at home, my dear. I love you. I love you. What would you say to that? You're a liar. What? Uh, no, not you. I mean Richard. That's what I'd say to Richard. Well, I'm, I'm afraid that'd finish the sequel right there. Oh, no. Please go on. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Timpson? Mrs. Forrester would like to see the young lady, sir. What for? Something about trying on a costume, sir. Oh, I know. It's a dress I'm going to wear the charity benefit tonight. The one I'm going to do the dance in. Oh, well, run along, then. <laughs> All right. So long. See you later, Mr. Mack. <laughs> Yes, Mother? Where is that girl? The brat? Oh, she's around someplace. Why? Mac, do you think it was nice to bring her here? Why not? Mrs. Lawrence said she didn't mind, and I'm interested in watching the brat under these conditions. Well, I hope she doesn't disgrace us. Oh, have you seen Angela yet? Not yet. Well, she's in the drawing room. She said if I saw you to tell you that. Oh, thanks, Mother. I'll see what she wants. Hello, Angela. Hello, Mac. Mother said you wanted to see me. Was that the only reason you came? Of course not. What makes you think such a thing? I was just wondering. Mac. Yes? Mac, when are we going to announce our engagement? Well, I don't know, Angela. I hadn't thought about it. Why not this evening? Right now? It's a little sudden, isn't it? Well, there's no time like the present, Mac. Unless you don't want to. Of course I do, but, well, I... I... Oh, well, all right. We'll announce it tonight. You don't seem very keen about it. Mac... I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. About what? I've been hearing some rather nasty rumors lately concerning that girl you've had at the house. The brat? Yes, the brat. What is she doing there, Mac? Why, you know that as well as I do. She's the model for my book. But the book is finished. Oh, I see. You think I should ask her to leave? Yes, for your own good. I don't understand you. Don't you? I suppose you realize that this girl has fallen in love with you. Who said so? Your mother told me. She's quite worried about it. Oh, ridiculous. Perhaps. But I'm not interested in that. What I want to know is, are you in love with her? Angela. Are you, Mac? Of course not. Whatever puts such nonsense into your head? The only reason I'm interested in this girl is that she can supply me with material for my novel. Well, I just wanted to make sure, Mac, because, well, people are beginning to talk. I don't see why. No? You think this creature of yours is an innocent young lamb, don't you? A tender flower blooming in the slums. Well, she isn't. What? She isn't. I've taken the trouble to find out. Do you suppose that the night you found her in the court was the first time she'd been arrested? You... you mean she's been arrested before that? Of course. On what charge? Suppose we call it vagrancy? Angela, are you sure of this? Yes, I am. I've investigated the case thoroughly. I can't believe it. You've got to believe it, Mac. And the girl has got to leave immediately for your own good. Angela, I don't know what to say to you. Don't say anything, dear. I'll send her away tomorrow. I think that would be best. Kiss me, Mac. You know, dear, you are sweet. Oh, Mr. Mac. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes? What Steve is it? Steve is here. He wants to see you, Mr. Mac. Oh. Well, Angela? It's all right, Mac. Run along and speak to him. I'll be here when you come back. Well, all right. I'll be with you in just a few minutes. Are you stuck on Mr. Mac, too? I beg your pardon. You hoid me? I asked if you were stuck on him. How does that interest you? 
It would be kind of funny if we was all stuck on them. Why, everybody loves Mac. Every woman in our set. Does your kind come in sets? <laughs> Sit down and talk to me a while. Now, I ain't supposed to get chummy with no guests here. I only come to do a dance. I see. But you're rather chummy with Mac, aren't you? Why shouldn't I be? Him and me is... Well, he's a great guy, Mac is. How do you mean? Well, he kept me from going to jail one night. I guess you heard about it. And he must have liked me pretty well to do that. And then he gave his ma some money, and she got me a lot of swell clothes. That was another thing he'd done. And I've been living here right in the same house as Steve. And I'm going to keep on living there until he gets used to me. And uh, then I guess we'll get married. Oh. Has he said anything to you about it? No. Nobody said nothing. But him and me has had some talks. Oh, gee, we talk every day. And I told him all about how I came to grow up. And he asked me questions like, what would I do if maybe I was jealous of some dame? And things like that. He don't care nothing for you. I'm the guy. And you... You love him? Love him? Gee, I love him so. I have pains in my sleep. I thought you weren't going to come, Steve. I wasn't, but I decided to leave for the ranch tonight. I've come to say goodbye. So you're really going? Mother gave you the money, I suppose. Yes. How much did she give you? 200 cash and a railroad ticket. Round trip? One way. Well, I hope you make it pay. I'll have to. Keep away from bar rooms and you won't have any trouble. If I don't, you'll never hear of it. Say, before I go, there's something I want to ask you. Yes? This book of yours, I suppose you'll make a fortune on it. The brat? Oh, perhaps. What does the girl get out of it? The time of her young life. Is that all? Certainly. For the past three months, she's had a good home and plenty of clothes, and as a crowning joy, she's making her debut here in society tonight. And tomorrow? Tomorrow, she's free to go where she pleases. Is it quite fair to turn her back to the slums again? Why not? That's where I found her. I know, but perhaps you haven't realized that three months spent in an environment like this means a lot to a youngster like her. She may be different now. They're never different, that kind. She's already different. See here, I don't propose to have my judgment or my actions questioned by anyone, least of all you. You talk as if you were her big brother. Well, I am her big brother. And I'm going to see that she isn't kicked out of here to starve. What are you talking about? I'm not kicking her out. I'm letting her go. Where? That's none of your business. And if you don't mind, we'll drop this discussion right here. Excuse me. Steve? Hey, Steve. Oh, hello, Brad. You ain't leaving, are you? Well, yes, I was, but I was going to see you first. Yeah. You got to stick around for my dance. I'll be doing it pretty soon, I guess. I'm afraid I won't be able to stay that long. You see, I'm going to catch a train. I'm leaving town. Tonight? Yes. Gee, ain't that fierce. When are you coming back, Steve? Oh, I don't know. Tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Next week? Next month? No, never. Never? Would you miss me very much if I didn't come back? Well, I never thought about it before, but I guess I would. Mac will, too. Him and me both will. Why do you say that? Well, we just will, that's all. Why do you say Mac and me? Oh, that's a secret, uh, yes. You never used to have secrets from me. I know. This one ain't really a secret. It's just something I think about night times. Oh, but you're going away, so it's all right if I tell you. I think I'm going to get married to Mac. Married? Yeah, that's why I'm so glad I'm going to dance tonight. Because he ain't never saw me do nothing. And he'd be so surprised, he simply won't know what to say. None of these other dames he knows can do one solitary thing. And I guess he'll be some proud of me, all right, all right. <laughs> I bet he'll love me even more after tonight. I'll love you more? Yeah, he does already. Oh, does he? Well, uh, he never come right out and said so, but he does. He couldn't be so good to me and mean nothing. Oh, no, no, of course not. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I know. You think I ain't good enough for him. That's what you think. No, it isn't. Honest? What's your address, Steve? I can write as well later when I get started. And when he asks me, and it's all settled, I'll drop you a postal card. Thanks. Where are you going? Primrose, Wyoming. Where's that? The end of the world. Don't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be lonesome. Yes, I think I will. Well, don't forget, Primrose, write when you like and as often as you like. And if you should ever need me, send a telegram, collect. I won't. I mean, I won't forget. And I guess I won't need nobody. I hope not. I'm going to miss you something terrible, Steve. Really? Cross my heart. Oh, but not for long. I don't know. Maybe the next time I see you, I'll be your honest-to-goodness sister. <laughs> well, goodbye. Steve. 
Ain't you going to kiss me? My old pals don't have to do that. But I want you to. Why do you? What's the difference? Oh, you're the first man I ever asked to kiss me. We've been all the time together, and we talk so much that I guess I know you better than anybody else around here. I've been afraid to say a lot of things to the rest, but it was different with you. I could cuss and swear all I wanted to. And you're wise to so many things that Mac, well, even he ain't wise to. We were just pals. That was it. And I don't know whatever I'm going to do when you're gone. Gee, kid, I... Will you... Will you kiss me now? Sure. Sure I will. Oh. Well? So long, Brad. Steve? Steve? So long. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. It was him. It was Steve all the time, and... And I didn't know it. For station identification, this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Our play, The Brat, starring Marion Davies with Joel McRae comes to you from the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood. You will hear the third act shortly. Clothes may not make the man, but in Hollywood, men make the clothes. Hollywood creates more styles than Paris, and a man responsible for many of them is with us tonight. Formerly a painter of murals and portraits, he's now stylist for the stars at Warner Brothers, First National, and Cosmopolitan Studios. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Aura Kelly. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. As one whose job it is to please the eye, it seems very odd to be working for an invisible audience. Before meeting Miss Davies a few years ago, I had been warned she had a wonderful sense of style and I anticipated lots of clashes. But I found her a real person, lovely of face and possessing what every stylist prays for, a superb figure. I've cost him such other notables as Kay Francis, Betty Davis, Ruth Chatterton, Barbara Stanwyck, Loretta Young, Ruby Keeler, and Ginger Rogers. On the screen, you see these stars at their best. In the fitting room, I see them at their worst, tired and harassed after long hours of standing while the fitters fuss and pin. Without exception, their patience is amazing. Kay Francis, like Miss Davies, is one of my favorites, insisting on smart simplicity in her gowns, as I think her next picture, The House of Fashion, will prove. This picture provides my first big opportunity to influence style. I have injected a Persian trend into all the costumes, but try to do it subtly. Both the evening and daytime dresses will suggest a trouser effect. Coats will have perfectly straight lines, and with these, they will wear turbans. Small for daytime and large for evening. Nothing will be radical. I have been inclined to underplay styles so that the smart and knowing woman will be able to adopt them. You, as a, as a man of many modes, for stars of many moods, perhaps can tell us who's the best-dressed woman in Hollywood. Well, Kay Francis has been named many times, although Anita Louise has an amazing influence on youthful styles. College girls particularly copy her. Olivia de Havilland is another who must be counted on for future fashion importance. But whatever dresses we make, they must be made to last. Through our experience, we at Warner Brothers have learned that as far as washables are concerned, Lux flakes can always be counted on to keep colors fresh and fabrics looking like new. As for fall styles, I think you're going to see a tendency towards simplicity, thanks in part to the movies. Lion and Concha give the best effects and incidentally enable the public to apply the styles easily. My advice to you is concentrate on Lion. Thank you. Thank you. And now for the last act of The Brat, starring Marion Davies. Late the same evening, in the living room of the Forrester home, Timpson is drawing the shades, preparatory to retiring for the night. As he turns from the window, he's surprised to find Steve, 
grip in hand, framed in the archway. Good evening, Timson. Why, Mr. Steve. Anybody home? No, sir, they haven't returned from the benefit yet. Did you change your mind about going away, Mr. Steve? No, but the train wouldn't hang around the station till I figured the whole thing out, so I missed it. You did now. Hmm. And you're home for the night. <laughs> Wrong again. I came back to ask you to do me a favor. I don't know whether you know it or not, but tomorrow the brat gets canned. What? Canned, sir? Yeah, Mac's going to throw her out in the street again. Oh, but he can't do that, sir. He not only can, but he will. See here, Tim. You've got to do something for me. I've got $200 here, and I want you to take 100 of it and give it to her just before she goes. It'll keep her until she gets work. You needn't say where it came from. Will you do this for me? Very oh, will indeed, sir. Good. That settles the whole matter. And will you be leaving at this hour, Mr. Steele? Well, there's a train out at daylight. Then why don't you take a little bit of a rest up in your room, sir? It's nice and warm there, and no one will be a bit the wiser. Uh, that's a good idea, Tim. But don't tell anyone I'm here. I wouldn't have them know I came back for a million. There's the bell, sir. You'd better hurry up. Remember, not a word to a soul until I'm gone. No, sir, I won't say one word. Hello, Jimson. Well, well, are you all by yourself, miss? Yeah, I didn't like the joint much, so I scrammed. And what was the trouble, miss? Why didn't you like it? They wouldn't let me do my dance. Ah, uh, do you tell me so? And I practiced it all morning, making believe the phonograph was an orchestra. Ah, uh, monsieur, between fooling yourself and being fooled be your friend. Tis a queer world. Let me take your coat, miss. No, please. Leave me wear it for a while. It's the last chance I'll ever get. How's that, miss? Nobody knows it yet. But I'm going away tomorrow. You made up your mind kind of suddenly. Well, I do things that way and then think them over later. Sometimes I'm wrong, but I'm most usual wrong. Oh, yes, miss. Timpson, how far is it to Primrose? And what did you be doing in Primrose? Steve's there and I want to go to him. Oh, glory be, but I'm glad to hear you say that, no. You, you like him, Tim? Ah, faith I do. He's a fine lad. Ah, why didn't you say so? I thought you was in with the rest of them around here, always treating them like he was in the way. No, he'll not be in their way any longer, miss. No, I won't neither. You only like him. I, I love him. And it's too late. You love him? Yeah. But I handed him such a line of talk about the other that he shut his trap and beat it. And who was the other one? Ah, oh, that part of it's awful silly. At first I was crazy about Mac. What, Mr. Macmillan? Well, I wasn't real crazy, but I thought I was. You know how them kids get daffy over the fellas in the movies? That was me. I didn't know no better, but I do now. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. How sure? I can't tell you without swearing. I beg your pardon, Mr. Forrester. Yes, what is it? You're wanted on the telephone, sir. Judge Henry calling. Oh, thank you. Hello? This is Macmillan, Judge Henry. How are you? Did you get my message? Yes, I called earlier this evening. Oh, you did? Well, I wanted to know about her, Judge Henry. You see, I feel sort of personally responsible for the girl. And if she has to be sent to a reform school or anything... What? What do you mean? Oh, I see. Then there was never anything against her. Oh. Everyone's asking. All right, Judge. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all. Thank you very much. Good night. I didn't know you were on the phone, Mac. I was speaking to Judge Henry. Oh. Angela, where did you get your information about that girl? Well, why? Why, from a private detective. You're lying. What? You lied to me this afternoon. Judge Henry just told me that girl was never arrested in her life. Well, what of it? Then you admit you lied. If you must know, yes. You didn't believe me when I told you I didn't love her, did you? You thought you had to blacken her character to make sure. Mac, listen to me. You must have known the truth about this would come out sometime. I didn't care. I see. And that's why you were so anxious to announce our engagement. You played your cards very well, Angela. Oh, please, Mac. Don't talk like that. Don't you understand it? It was because I love you. Yes, you had a peculiar way of showing it. You... You don't really love this girl. What difference does that make now? Can I take that bundle downstairs for you, Alana? Nah, don't bother, Timpson. I'll do it myself. Hello. Oh. oh. I didn't hear you come in, Mr. Mac. Where are you going? Me? I'm going back where I started from. What have you got in that bundle? My clothes. Anything else? You didn't give me nothing else, did you? No. And there ain't nothing else in here. So you're leaving us. Don't you like it here? Nah, it's too frosty. <laughs> 